Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're about halfway through our unit on, on proving different things about lines and angles and all that. Uh, today we're going to be talking about proving lines perpendicular. We've d dealt with uh, parallel lines before. Now it's time to talk about being perpendicular. So really two things that we're looking for. A couple new theorems that we're going to be able to use in proofs and then determining which lines have to be parallel maybe, but uh, focusing on those that have to be perpendicular uh, depending on given angles. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like you to take a look at is the bottom of your, your notes uh, where it says this is you on the other side of that stream. You're trying to cross the river over to this side. Which point should you jump to uh, in order to jump to the shortest distance? Should you go from A to B or A to C or A to D or A to E? I, I would ask you to just pause right now. Uh, take a minute or less to write down uh, an answer and an explanation uh, for what you think it should be. Here's what I've got um, as a solution. Uh, it, you really should be going to C if you want to make sure you get across the stream without getting your feet wet. That is the, the shortest distance. And I, I reasoned it like this. Um, it is the straight perpendicular to the edge of the water. It's a straight line. And if you think about this line that I've got kind of marked in red and green, uh, that red and green line is perpendicular to AC. Okay, so if you want to form this, if you want to see triangles that are formed by that to kind of to show why that is the shortest distance, you can see any of the other distances, A to B, would be really a, a hypotenuse of this triangle. A to D would be a hypotenuse of this triangle. A to E would be a hypotenuse of that larger triangle. So all those other ones are the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. So AC is going to be the shortest there. Now, one other thing I'd like you to do is just uh, go to the, the, the next part of your notes, and we're going to talk about three theorems, theorem 3.89 and 10. And those you can find in your book or in that um, sheet of postulates and theorems that I gave you. And I just want you to, again, write these in your own words uh, so that they make sense to you. Here's what theorem 3.8 looks like. Uh, it says if you've got these two lines that intersect, so here we've got this vertical one, we've got this uh, uh, horizontal one, and if they're intersecting to form a linear pair, which means they share one ray and they form a line, we know they're going to be supplementary, they, they're going to add up to 180. If that happens, but then it's also shown that the two angles are congruent, then these lines must be perpendicular. In other words, these two angles must be 90 degrees. I hope that makes sense because the only way for two of the same kind of angle to add up to 180 degrees is if they're both 90. And if they're both 90 degree right angles, then these two lines are going to be perpendicular. So again, you can write that in your notes uh, in a way that makes sense to you. Theorem 3.9 kind of goes along with that. It says if you've got these two um, lines that you know are perpendicular, perpendiculars form right angles, right? So if this one's a right angle, this second angle over here also has to be right because they form a linear pair like we just talked about in theorem 3.8. If this is a right angle and uh, angle 2 and angle 4 together are a linear pair, then this one's got to be a right angle down here. And same thing with 3 and 4, or 1 and 3. All of those angles coming off perpendicular lines have to be right angles. So if you've got one, you've got the other three as well. And finally, the third theorem that we want to look at uh, for this section, theorem 3.10, if you've got two sides of two adjacent acute angles, so here are my two angles, angle 1 and angle 2, they're both acute, they're adjacent in the fact that they share a ray. Those two angles are adjacent because they share this ray. Um, it's really the other sides of them, the outside edges that we're talking about, where, where we say if two of those sides of the adjacent angles are perpendicular, so A, B, and BC are perpendicular here. We know that because they form this um, right angle. Since they form a right angle, and that right angle is made up of 1 and 2, we could say that 1 and 2 are complementary. They add up to 90 degrees. So that's theorem 3.10. Um, I'd like you to just write that down in your own words in a way that makes sense to you, so then we can take that and we can carry it uh, over with us as we use them in proofs.